In many of my articles and many of my videos, I've always mentioned the importance of including an aerobic, comp an aerobic component to your exercise program. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of bodybuilders and people involved in weight training forego doing aerobics because of many false ideas about aerobics, such as that it'll cause you to lose muscle or somehow prevent muscle gain, or, or some of them believe that they can get enough uh, endurance activity just from training fast. In other words, keeping your rest periods down between sets. All of this is false. There is no way of escaping the fact that you have to do aerobic exercise if you really want a comp to be completely healthy, and also if you want to live longer. Among the effects of aerobic activity is that it maintains the nitric oxide system in your blood vessels, the, the uh, increased blood circulation that results from aerobic exercises produces a shearing effect on the endothelium or the lining of blood vessels. This in turn promotes the production of nitric oxide locally in the blood vessels. Now of course your circulation also increases when you do weight training but it's not to the same extent as aerobics. Aerobics is a more of an increase, let's say, in systemic blood circulation, which greatly increases the production of nitric oxide. Among the effects of nitric oxide, I'm not going to, I've done past videos on, nit on nitric oxide, so I'm not going to go into uh, the, uh, some of the effects of nitric oxide. But one interesting effect is that it keeps your arteries supple. It, it, in other words, it keeps your arteries flexible. And the stiffening of arteries is the actual beginning of cardiovascular disease. As the arteries stiffen, you get something called atherosclerosis, which eventually leads to heart attacks and strokes. So if you can keep your arteries supple or flexible, you will go a long way in preserving your cardiovascular system and also extend your life and prevent cardiovascular disease. Now, uh, exercise, uh, many studies have shown that exercise decreases mortality and increases, let's say, life extension or how long you're able to live. Uh, you know, a lot of these studies are epidemiological. In other words, they look at large groups of people, some people who exercise, some people who didn't. The people who exercise generally live longer. They have better, they're in better cardiovascular condition. They have less body fat, and they're generally healthier than people that don't uh, do uh, exercise. But specifically, uh, a new study came out just the other day, and that's what I want to talk about in this video, because this study should have made the news media, but it didn't. So that's why I'm doing a video on this, in case any of you haven't seen or heard about this study. This study was published in the European Heart Journal, and what it did is it examined three different types of exercise to see what, how the exercise would affect something called telomeres. Now, what are telomeres? Telomeres are the end of chromosomes. What are chromosomes? Chromosomes are found in the nucleus of every cell. They contain the genetic blueprint for the replication of cells. Chromosomes are made up of uh, protein chromatin, also DNA. So your, your chromosomes basically determine who you are and also all the characteristics you have, eye color, everything, skin, uh, let's say a predisposition to various diseases. All of these are determined by your cellular DNA, which lies in chromosomes. Now, chromosomes have these kind of uh, more or less, the best way to picture is look at like strings of, of, of DNA that uh, are at the ends of the chromosomes. These are called telomeres. They basically cap off the chromosomes. and uh, But the problem is that every time the cell replicates, in other words, every time the cell turns over and reproduces, a little bit of telomere, uh, a little bit of telomere shorten. They shorten every time the cell replicates. Eventually, when it gets to the end of the telomeres, uh, what happens is the cell stops replicating, and it goes into a state called senescence. Senescence is just another word for older cell. In other words, these senescent cells, they just sit there. They don't do anything. They kind of get in the way of healthy cells. But more importantly, they also promote the release of inflammatory uh, factors that are very negative to long-term health. So senescent cells right now are emerging as one of the main causes of aging diseases and aging in general. I'm going to have an article in my Applied Metabolics newsletter about how to deal with senescent cells. There are ways that you can deal with it nutritionally and through exercise. And I'm going to talk about this in depth in Applied Metabolics. But right now, I want to talk about this very interesting study. 
So what this study did, uh, did is it, it, uh, it, it, it compared uh, three types of exercise, basically running, uh, uh, you know, what it compared, let me, let me talk about, let me get to the point here. Uh, it basically, uh, it, had, it involved 266 young, healthy, but previously inactive volunteers, and it randomized them to six months of endurance training, which is continuous running. You know, these are the three types, endurance training, continuous running. The second type was high-intensity interval training, which was a warm-up followed by four bouts of high-intensity running, alternating with slower running. And then a final cooldown of slower, of, of slower running. The resistance, the, the resistance training, uh, and this is interesting, the resistance training consisted of circuit training on eight machines, including back extension, crunch, pull-down, seated rowing, seated leg curl, and extension, seated chest press, and lying leg press. Now, what's interesting about this is a lot of people that don't do aerobics, say uh, they say, well, I can get all my... Uh, my heart benefits from just training fast, training more rapidly, uh, not resting much between sets. Well, circuit training involves doing several exercises in a circuit. In other words, you do, you know, like 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 here, you do several ex, like let's say five or six exercises, but you go to each exercise one after the other with no rest. So you're training very fast. In fact, circuit training has been shown to be the only type of weight training that actually benefits the heart almost as much as aerobics but not quite as much as you'll see in this study but the point being that circuit training unfortunately is not the best way to grow larger muscles because the minimum rest uh, between sets that 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 characterizes circuit training unfortunately doesn't allow time for the muscles to recover between sets so you get very little strength gains and, and the size gains are also minimized however circuit training again because of the lack of rest is the best type of cardiovascular weight training but not the best for building muscle the participants were randomized to three uh, in this study the three forms of exercise undertook three 45 minute sessions a week for a total of uh, and a total of 124 out of 266 people completed the study there's always dropouts people get lazy or they get hurt or they just don't want to do it anymore the researchers analyzed telomere length and telomerase activity. Now, telomerase is an enzyme that actually helps replicate telomere. In other words, it, it's an enzyme that keeps the telomere longer. Telomerase does. It's an enzyme. Like I say, now cancer cells are immortal because they produce telomerase. In other words, cancer cells never actually die unless something is done to kill them, like chemotherapy or something like that. And the reason they're immortal is because of telomerase. They just go on and on and on. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. What if we gave humans telomerase? Uh, wouldn't that uh, extend life because it would keep the cells alive? Well, yes and no. Uh, first of all, the telomeres aren't found in certain tissues like, like neurons, nerves. They don't have telomeres. So even if you can keep the telomeres alive in your muscles and your heart and other tissues, the neurons in your brain they continue to age. So you know, those telomeres are no, are not no answer to uh, to uh, life extension. In other words, they're not going to let you live uh, uh, as long as you uh, wish. Uh, but you know, but keeping generally speaking, keeping the telomeres longer, anything that does that will be to go a long way to maintaining cellular health and actually will reduce the rate of aging, especially in muscles and heart and other tissues. So anyway. Uh, the, in this, in this uh, study, the researchers analyzed telomere length and telomere activity in white blood cells or leukocytes. That's how they usually measure telomere uh, length and telomere activity in the leukocytes or white blood cells because they're the easiest cells to measure it in. Uh, and the cells were taken from the volunteers at the start of the study and two to seven days after the final bout of exercise, six months later. Now, the uh, leader of the study said that our, mind, our, our main finding is that compared to the start of the study, and the control group who didn't do these exercises, the volunteers who did endurance and high intensity training, telomerase, telomerase activity and telomere length increased, which are both important for cellular aging, regenerative capacity, and thus healthy aging. Interestingly, resistance training did not have these effects. In other words, resistance training, weight training, did not provide the anti-aging effects that both types of endurance training, which was continuous running and high interval aerobics did. You don't get the same benefits with weight training. To my mind, of course, I'm a little older than a lot of people watching this, but to my mind, uh, this is uh, absolutely uh, essential information to anybody who wants to live a longer and healthier life 
And what it says in essence is that if you want to do so, you better include some aerobic exercise because weight training will not give you the same benefits. Now in this study, the telomerase, again, the enzyme that maintains telomeres, telomerase activity was increased two to three fold and telomere length was increased significantly in the endurance and high intensity training groups compared to the resistance and control groups. Uh, one of the authors said the study identifies a mechanism by which endurance training but not resistance training improves healthy aging. It might help to design future studies on this important topic by using telomere length as an indication of biological age. Uh, now, now, one of the uh, mechanisms involved was kind of interesting because uh, it turns out that uh, when you maintain the telomerase, you also maintain nitric oxide and you also d decrease oxidation. Now, I should tell you that I'm going to have a big article on how to maintain telomere length Everything you could do naturally through nutrition and exercise to maintain, to maintain telomere length as you get older. But I can tell you right now, one of the main reasons why the telomeres shorten is because of excessive oxidation. In other words, exposure to, let's say, free radicals, reox uh, reactive oxygen species, or RLS. This is produced in the course of normal oxygen metabolism. Your mitochondria and producing energy as ATP spill out thousands and thousands of molecules of free radicals and re reactive oxygen species. Unfortunately, these things, more than anything else, more or less kind of attack the telomeres and prematurely shorten them, so they speed up the aging process. So anything that keeps the oxidation low will maintain the telomeres and maintain the cell life. You know, uh, the cell will keep may, you know, be, be maintained at a healthy state and keep replicating. And it turns out that uh, nitric oxide is involved in this process. Uh, again, I've done past videos on nitric oxide. I'm not going to go into that now. But one quick, one easy way to really get your nitric oxide up is to consume beet juice, about six to eight ounces, two and a half hours before training. You have to have it two and a half hours. It takes about that long for the nitrites, nitrates in the beet juice, to to be converted into nit first nitrites and then nit nitric oxide through enzymatic activity in the body. So that's one way to keep up your nitric oxide. Uh, but to me. Uh, this is an extremely uh, important study because I think for the first time it, it, it illustrates, uh, I mean, there's many reasons to include aerobic exercise as part of your exercise uh, uh, training uh, because really you can't mimic the effects of aerobic exercise in conditioning the heart and cardiovascular system. As I say, you can come close by using circuit weight training. We do like, let's say, five, six exercises, one after a row with no rest. But that still doesn't mimic. You don't get the same heart effects as you do by doing either continuous aerobics or high-intensity in, high interval training. You just can't mimic it with weight training. But this study adds a new dimension to that because it, it shows that doing aerobics, and again, the choice is yours, continuous or high-intensity high intensity intervals, you know, whichever one you prefer, this study shows it will actually maintain the telomeres, and in some cases, it can actually, or in most cases, it can actually lengthen telomeres that uh, that are actually beginning to shorten. So this thing will, uh, this type of exercise will, without question, extend your lifespan and keep you healthier as you age. I mean, honestly, I got to give you a blank statement. Anybody who's over 40 uh, that doesn't, or even younger, that doesn't include an aerobic component to your exercise is, I think you're crazy. You're nuts. You're not going to get it from weight training. No matter what you read online, no matter what these stupid internet blogs say, you can't escape the fact that you have to do some form of aerobic training. And again, uh, maintaining telomeres is very, very important for aging. Uh, uh, there, uh, another study about six months ago, even if you were this study, showed that uh, aerobic exercise maintains the telomere length in the heart muscle cells, the myocytes, uh, they're called uh, cardiomyocytes, uh, just doing aerobic exercise maintains the telomeres in heart muscle cells. Basically, in a practical sense, that means aerobic exercise keeps your heart younger. Keeps your heart younger. And let me tell you something. In all the research I've done, one thing has become clear. Cardiovascular health is the key to healthy aging. The people that live to over 100, they have one. Th all of them have one thing in common, besides the fact that most of them are very short, but that's another story. The one thing they have in common is they're all in excellent cardiovascular shape. You cannot 
live a long time without having good cardiovascular health. Having good, car good cardiovascular health is also related to brain health because your neurons absolutely depend on an oxygen supply. When the neurons in your brain don't get enough oxygen because of poor blood circulation, they die. As they die, you have clinical signs of dementia diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and others. All of this is due to uh, uh, one of the main causes, I should say, is poor circulation in the brain related to poor cardiovascular health. So. That's, all, that's about it. That's all I'm going to say here, but I just wanted to uh, let you know uh, the name of the, for those, those of you who want to know the name of the study, it hasn't come out yet. It's a uh, pre, uh, it's kind of a pre-public publication online. The name of the study is uh, Differential Effects of Endurance Interval and Resistance Training on Telomerase Activity and Telomere Length in a Randomized Controlled Study. Uh, the main author is Christian Werner. It was published in the European Heart Journal in case you want to check it out yourself. Uh, and so, again, don't neglect the importance of, of uh, aerobic exercise. As a, uh, you got to do both. you got to do weight training, and you got to do aerobics. If you re and if you don't do aerobics, you're very foolish from a health point of view. If you want further information about nutrition, exercise, science, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that really work, uh, ergogenic aids and much more subscribe today to my applied metabolics newsletter www.appliedmetabolics.com those who subscribe I will send an invitation to join my private applied metabolics Facebook page where every day I post new information on nutrition exercise and general health also if you're a subscriber you can uh, I have an email portal on my uh, applied metabolics website you could uh, you can you can email me short questions. I'll be happy to answer. Only if you're a uh, current subscriber, I don't answer unsolicited questions. You're welcome to leave comments under the video. Uh, however, there's a very very outside chance that I'll uh, that I'll respond to comments. Uh, most of the time, I don't. I, again, I will definitely they'll respond to subscribers to my uh, Applied Metabolics newsletter. And that's about it. Uh, Applied Metabolics, by the way, is 40 to 50 pages every month. No advertisements. Pure information based on my 57 years of, of constant study and, ex and, uh, and, and actual experience. I'm not, an armchair I'm not an armchair philosopher like a lot of people that write on exercise and nutrition where they don't practice it themselves. I've worked out for close to 60 years. I know all the tricks. I'm including it in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It'll save you a lot of money on, on, on bogus, crappy supplements. I tell the truth. I'm beholden to no one. I'm not involved with any supplement company like a lot of these PhDs. They're on the payroll of supplement companies, and they, they just give you BS because they're being paid to lie to you. I never do that. When well, you get my newsletter, is 100% unvarnished truth. I guarantee it. I guarantee you will learn something also. A couple of months after reading my newsletter, you'll be, you yourself will be an expert. I also guarantee that. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're great. And I, I wish dogs really, the most tragic thing about dogs, and I've had about four or five, about five of them over the years, is uh, they have a rel rel relatively short lifespan compared to humans. And that's the most tragic thing. I, I really wish dogs... If I could change, if I had some sort of godlike power, one of the first things I'd do is make dogs live at least as long or even longer than human beings. Because if there's any creature that deserves to live a long time, it's dogs. To me, they're like little angels. Take care.